Now, today we're going to speak with one individual. He's saying for the queen. He's saying for the Dalai Lama. And up until he made a decision to sing the O Canada in a controversial manner, or how some perceived to be a controversial manner, at a Major League Baseball All-Star game back in 2016, he was one of the four members of the Canadian Tenors. He's now about to embark on a solo career, and he stopped by City News to speak and, and speak and share a bit of his story. We're joined by Remigio Pereira. Thank you so much for joining yeah, us today. Thanks for having me. Take us through what your life has been like since that day standing uh, at the ballpark for the All-Star game. Oh, well, it's been... Uh it's been pretty crazy, you know. I mean, to be uh, to be promoting love and peace throughout the world uh, through the songs that we sing and that we write, and going to various countries, you know, like Swaziland, and uh, raising money uh, for orphan care and and, uh, and building schools with free the children and We Day, um, you know, we're about love and peace, you know. And uh, at that time, there was uh, none of that going on, and. Um, it's uh, it's hard to be seen as a racist when it's the furthest thing from my body. Uh, you know, I'm I'm Portuguese. My parents are immigrants. Uh, I grew up in a multicultural uh, neighborhood. My daughter's biracial, and um, it just seems like you know journalism today doesn't uh, doesn't they, nobody does their research. If they had done any research on me, they would know what I was all about and what the message was. And uh, and so it's been difficult, you know. Uh, being labeled racist, uh, you, you you phone people up in the industry that you've uh, you've known for years and you've written songs with and you've done all these things with, and um, you don't get a response back. You don't get any phone calls, no texts, no nothing, and uh, it's just like you have the plague, you know. And uh, you know, feeling uh, feeling the uh, the effects of this, you know, my family as well has felt it. You know, my mother, uh, you know, called every name in the book. Uh, smear campaign throughout you know all of the internet you know people just don't do the research they have no idea and I was silenced and I wasn't allowed to speak after the incident and uh, had I had a moment to to explain what it was all about uh, I think that things would have been very different for for myself and the tenors and for everybody involved I think uh, um, you know we need to find a way of, of, of being peaceful and the message was never at Black Lives Matter, it was never at any minority group, the message was to the system that puts people in dire straits and uh, you know we were there in, an, in, a, in a baseball field uh, with nationalities, all different cultures making money uh, for the corporation uh, and they were well protected you know there were so many police officers there, it was ridiculous uh, but then their families are being killed in the streets, you know. And uh, I'm not a man of violence. Uh, I'm a man of peace. And, uh, and that's what we promote in our songs. And uh, the French lyrics, that is what I was supposed to sing, and not the English lyrics. If you watch the last 500 anthems that we've done, I start singing the French lyrics. And if you know what the French lyrics mean, uh, it's contradicting to having peace. And so if we're going to be singing anthems, that sing about bombs bursting in air, well, that's exactly what we're going to have. If we sing anthems that say you carry the cross and you carry the sword, those are contradicting. If you carry the cross, you're representing, or supposed to be, representing peace. If you carry the sword, you're instilling violence uh, over people. And to me, I, uh, I don't agree with that. And it was a spur of the moment thing, uh, you know, with everything that was going on, Alton Sterling, had, uh, had been killed uh, for selling CDs on the street, and you have uh, these uh, the Dallas police that were that, that were shot. It's it's ridiculous, and it's unfortunate because you know the media uh, today is is pushing this type of agenda. You know, they're, they're, the the people that get behind some of these movements, you have to question uh, what their motives are. And uh, it's coming out now that George Soros is 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 behind, you know, giving 75 million dollars to an organization, and. You know, is he really a philanthropist? I mean, the guy bank bankrupted the Bank of England. You know, that's how he made his money. Let me ask you this. So, if, I mean, I just want to say that, you know, if you're supporting both sides of the equation, there's it's a conflict of interest. It's just like if you have a president uh, of a country that makes money off of tanks. What do you think his agenda is going to be? So people have to dig deeper and do their research and really find out what's really going on behind all this stuff. If you had a chance, to step on that field and sing that anthem again as a member of the tenors, mm -hmm. 
would you do it any differently? Uh, I would have, you know, I would have told the guys about it, you know. I, I was just trying to protect them because, you know, it was a last moment thing that happened. And I, you know, there's so many things going through my head at the time. And I just wanted to, you know, make a statement of peace and say, hey, you know, we have to bond together. This is about, you know, all of us coming together and realizing that it's not us that we have to fight. We're not fighting each other. We have to stand up to the system that is creating this type of, of problem. You know, these elitists that make tons of money off of both sides. You know, if, if, you're, if, if you're making money on guns and you're supporting in militant groups, I mean, that's it's just wrong. I mean, everybody would know that. You would have done it but you would have spoken to them first about it. I would stand up for peace all the time. I'd stand up for, for equality for everyone. I would stand up for the lives of animals. I'm a vegan. And uh, I just believe that this world, you know, people need to make better decisions, you know. And some people might see that the anthem, changing the words of the anthem was not the best thing to do. Um, but I mean, the people who died under the auspices of, of freedom, thinking that they were going to war to go and fight for people's freedom, for their families, did they die in vain? Are we at peace today? When we hear all lives matter, there are alt-right groups that, that will march to that slogan. They also will have their own put on it and, and that say white lives matter. Uh, how, how I don't, it, I don't how, believe in white lives matter. I believe in everyone's life mattering. You know, And those who wish to take three words oh. that if you ask a two-year-old or a three-year-old what all lives matter means, they would include everyone. So there's no reason for someone to come and hijack three words in the English language to make it mean something that it doesn't, because then it, it incriminates the whole world who believes that everybody's life is important. Then why have you been ostracized if, if those words were That's a fantastic question. I would love to know that, that, the answer to that, you know? And unfortunately, when people have interests in, in creating warfare, they own the media, and then they want to, uh, you know, twist the story to make it so that there's blood running in the streets because when there's blood running in the streets, that's when George Soros makes his money. People like George Soros. Let's take it back a step. You mentioned before we began this interview that the stage right behind us here at Dundas Square was one of the first stages you performed yeah. with the tenors. Yeah. Take us back to moments like that and where you're at today. Do you miss those moments? What does it mean when you look at the stage and think back? I think was it all a dream? I mean, you know, we sing songs about peace, about love, about harmony, uh, being instruments of peace. And um, I mean, I, I can, I can die knowing that I, I stood up for the right causes. You know, I, I didn't cave to money. I didn't cave to the greed in this world. You know, to me, it's not about the money. I really couldn't give a shit about money. You know, it's about people's lives. That's what's important. The money hasn't been easy to come by, you've, you've said, uh, in, in recent months. Yeah, because I've been living off of my savings because I've been completely cut off by my own business so that I know nothing of what's going on. I have no idea what's going on with my business that I own 25% of still to this day. And uh, so I've lived, been living off my savings and, and you know, they're, they're done. And so now I'm going out and trying to put on shows because nobody wants to hire a racist, you know? You're still part, you, you, from a business standpoint, you still are 25% owner of the tenors? I, I am 25% owner of the tenors, that's right. And uh, it's interesting because on Wikipedia, you know, six hours after uh, the event happened, I was removed from being a member of the group and, and, and nothing has been solved, nothing has been resolved at all. Have you received any money from them since the Never. July 2016? I haven't received a phone call to see how I'm doing. I haven't received an email to see how I'm doing. Fraser had a baby. I sent him a note congratulating him and Kelly. I haven't received a response. I haven't received anything from these guys. And they go around, you know, doing what they do. On your Facebook page, uh, you mm -hmm. know, it, it gets a little personal. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you say that you've apologized. They say you haven't. I, have proof I don't have to say anything. There's two sides to every story, but the third side is the truth. And the third side is on the Facebook page. If you want to see it and want to hear it, it's all right there. We asked for their comment today. Uh, they're through their publicist. They're away. They're not. We're told they're not in the country. But through their publicist, they say that the the group ha has no comments. What, what what's your thought? Of course, thoughts? they have no comment. They had no comment back then. They they didn't. They want me to hide from the media. I. They told me don't talk to anyone. You know. And so I didn't. I kept it completely, thinking that they were going to do the right thing. It's 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 about doing the right thing.
you know? And they knew exactly what it was all about because I explained to them, I told them everything, and it's just not good enough, you know? What were those moments after singing the national anthem when you went back, I'm assuming, into a room at the stadium, at the All-Star game? What was the conversation between the four of you at that moment? There really wasn't much of a conversation. It was just mostly yelling and screaming and telling me off and then trying to make up excuses for, you know, why I did it, that I was off my meds and whatnot. It's, I'm not on any meds. I'm a vegan. I live clean. I eat clean. I'm 100% conscious. I know what's going on. I study politics. I study all these things that are, go you know, that are happening in this world. I'm not willing to lie. I'm not going to lie. People died. And I'm not going to make uh, an excuse uh, with mental health when there's tons of people with that, those issues. And it's not to be taken lightly, only to be used whenever you, know, you want to be politically correct. There will be those who say, well, he's got a show coming up this weekend. Convenient time for him to come and speak to the media. Well, I mean, when's a convenient time to tell the truth? A year and a half, almost a year and two months later? When are they going to come out and tell the truth? You know? Clefton posted on his Facebook page saying that, uh, you know, for evil to continue, good people need to remain silent and take a stand. And I just find it quite ironic that someone who, uh, who seems to believe the same things I do seems to be saying the exact same things I was saying and what I did uh, to be saying it behind a computer and not living, uh, well, not walking his talk. That's just what it's about. Why speak with us today? I was asked to. I wasn't thinking I was going to do it. And, uh, you know, I don't, you know, I, the fans know now, you know, and uh, you can't hide behind your Armani suits. You can't hide behind, you know, your fake smiles and your uh, bullshit talk. You know, if you sing about something, you better mean it. I'm not singing about bling bling. I'm not singing about, you know, what I got, what we have. and all. No, we're singing about things that are important in this world. And that's we, we're spreading love and peace and harmony. And that's what it's about. There'll be those watching right now at home on their TVs, on their iPads, on their phones, who are saying, yeah. what were you thinking changing the lyrics of our national anthem? Those that will say, you know, they were deeply offended by that. What do you say to them? Well, I'm saying, do you rather have bombs bursting in air? Do you rather carry the sword and the cross? Do you rather see blood running in the streets? Do you, do you, do you, do you think that the lives of those that, that, that went before us, that gave their lives for the freedoms and, and peace uh, of this country, did they die in vain? Why are we still fighting? Why is that still happening? You know? I mean, people should do some research. If every country in the world can get along and, and agree to the Antarctic Treaty, you know, countries that are at war with each other, everybody agrees on the Antarctic Treaty, how is it that we can agree on peace? You're about to embark on your first solo show. Yeah. The nervous for that, how you might be received? Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, I was nervous after when I, you know, my shows with Pavlo were canceled. Uh, last year, uh, you know, uh, Catherine Wynn, I mean, they, they got all the politicians to come out and, and say whatever they wanted to say, you know, against me. But I mean, Catherine Wynn, if she knew that my sister was uh, a lesbian, you know, I, I got fired, I got, I got canned from uh, the show in, uh, in London, Ontario, you know, who is a, a, a venue that supports, you know, gay and lesbian, you know, and all races and everything. Did they do their research? They didn't do the research. They jumped on the bandwagon, and that's the problem, you know? I, I'm not gonna jump on a bandwagon. I'm not gonna lie, you know? If we're about truth, truth is the most important thing. If we don't have that, then what do we have? You know, the last, you know, money means nothing. Love is the only currency that we have, and what you show people. Because at the end of the day, you know, when all hell breaks loose and there's no more funds, there's nothing to go around, the only way that you're gonna get something from, that, that you might need is, by how you've treated people around you. They're gonna be willing to do something or they will not be willing to do something. And it's all about love, that's all it is. Colin Kaepernick, mm -hmm. NFL quarterback. He yeah. took a knee, he took a stand. Yep. He's currently still unemployed as well. Yeah. You feel that you've been cast in a similar light for taking a stand for, or being <laughs> misunderstood? No, because my shirts, my, 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 my jerseys didn't, weren't like the number one selling jersey, like I mean, 
it's just funny how one side everything becomes this huge glorified thing and then if you take you know a, a stand that is not uh, it's not a stand it's not a racist stand it, it's a it, it's a human stand that's saying that every life is important uh, you're, 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 you know, you're plagued as, as a racist, and you're plagued as a, uh, you know, someone that 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 is violent, and 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 God knows what, you know, and it's it's a double standard, it is, you know, because I'm not a white supremacist, that's ridiculous, you know, I'm a human supremacist, I'm a I'm a, I'm an animal supremacist, I'm would, a life supremacist. Would you rethink some of the slogans uh, or words you use that day uh, to try and convey your message if you had a redo? No, because I'm not going to take someone's meaning of what words that are universal. I'm not going to change the meaning of a word to make it mean something. If I say to you, I love you, all right, but someone who's told you I love you a million times has like punched you in the face, been violent and all that, next time someone says I love you, you're going to have a neuroassociative conditioning to think that love means hate when it doesn't. You can't change the meaning of words and, and, and make it uh, and, and make it for your, for your cause, you know. It, All Lives Matter actually came in the turn of the century when it was about animal activism. That's what it was. It was talking about animals' lives, that every life is important. All lives matter, you know. And uh, it's unfortunate that uh, the powers that be, these elitists, are uh, using uh, language to pit people against each other. You've you made know? it. You... We are, we are, people are peaceful, okay. There's more love than hate in this world. But unfortunately, the media, all they do is show bad news. You know, and then you then you get then they get caught showing fake news. You know, you see people actually setting up bombs in cars and then taking off, and then a bunch of other people coming in, setting up, lying down on the ground, and then the cameras come out. Like, what kind of the world are we living in? You know, the people that own these corporations, the people that own all the media corporations. Well, I'm I'm media, and you know, we're standing here talking with you today and letting you say your 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 exactly. your, your side of the story in a full format. That's right. But guess what? When I was trying to get on Q last year, when they wanted to do a talk to me, a talk to me, they wouldn't want to do a live interview with me because they're afraid what I, of what I was going to say. That's why I wanted this to be a live interview. Well, I think similar similar to to your stance, you know, it's it's unfair to paint everyone with the same brush or paint one person. I'm not saying with a that, but brush. I mean, unfortunately, CNN and 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 Fox, they they get caught in their own bullshit. You know. You've made it pretty clear, though. I think some people at home would still like to hear very clearly from you what was going through your mind. You said it was a very quick decision. Yeah. During that quick decision, what was going through your mind when you went out in that field to make a stand? I was shaking in my boots. I, you know, I, I looked at my dad's wedding rings that I had on me, and and I thought about all the animals that are being killed. You know, it's one of the worst holocausts ever. Is animals being killed the way they're being treated, and and I thought about you know all the lives of all the minority groups that are out there that are being you know <laughs> taken out. You know, and it's it, it, I stand up for life. I will always stand up for life. Everyone's life is important, and. Um, yeah, it's a, it wasn't a, a, an easy thing uh, <laughs> to do, and it wasn't an easy thing to, to live with afterwards. And uh, but I assume responsibility for what I did. I, I know my intention. It's just unfortunate that that intention wasn't actually delivered in the way that it was supposed to in a group statement from a company that I own. I had no say in whatsoever in any any of it. I mean, it could have all gone away if they said, you know what? Yeah, we're totally angry with with Remy and how we went about doing it but you know he's a man of peace because I've we've been with him for 10 years and we know what 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 we're all about and uh, and we'll let him speak but that never happened in closing you have a show this Sunday we promised uh, to mention that as well tell us a bit about the show this Sunday at the winery well it's uh it, it's my own show now and uh, you know I'm I'm performing all, almost all original music that I that I've written throughout the years, and uh, what's also on my uh, my new record. I mean, this record uh, has come to me through you know one of some of the greatest <laughs> trials and tribulations of my life, and um, I just want to get back to making music. You know, I I, I don't want to be labeled a racist anymore. You know, and I want the the record to be set straight that I'm that people know that I'm not a racist. You know, and it was left out there. For the media and i mean every article that you take you know if, just read the comments you racist scumbag you racist this and that it's and a lot of the public's perception too of what took well, place who who do you think is painting the public opinion <laughs> who I, 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 i've been on planes with a lot of you know some of your co-hosts and 
and people in the media, they know. I've been to Kenya with them. Why didn't anybody speak up to say, hey, guys, you got this wrong. Remy's not a racist. Nobody did. Not one. Not one person. Why? You felt like you've just been left out in the cold. How would you feel if people that you've worked with for, the re for your whole life, for 10 years, you know, let you hang as a racist? Yeah. How would you feel? Thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. No problem. Thank you we for having me. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. Thank you. Peace to you, brother. We'll have more uh, with Remy coming up on City News at 5 and 6 and City News tonight at 11 as well as on citynews.ca.